Dr. Sleeper, our first question will go to you. And a, a very common scenario, veterinarian writes, I heard a heart murmur in a seven-year-old female spayed chihuahua. Should I start pimobendin? What say you? So I think this is a common question. And, you know, we all want to try to help our patients and, and help them be as healthy and live as long as possible. Um, but there are a couple of things that are important in making a decision on whether to start the medication. I think one of the most important things to keep in mind is how slow degenerative valve disease progresses in many, many of our dogs. There are obviously the exceptions where things progress very rapidly, unfortunately, but in general, this is a disease that's very slowly progressive with you know, most dogs that are over 13 years of age, often it doesn't even impact their survival. It does, it's not the ultimate cause of their death. And in younger dogs, it's also very, very slowly progressive. So many dogs, the majority, in fact, 70%, were alive 6.6 .6 years after the murmur was first detected. So I think what's most important in determining whether we start the medication or not is to stage the disease and see if the dog is actually B1 or B2. And of course, we're talking about asymptomatic dogs here, since this is a dog where we just heard a murmur, but not necessarily having any clinical signs. That's an important thing to keep in mind with this answer. So the first part of staging the disease is determining when you want to start with more advanced imaging or imaging at all. And I often will tell people that I think it's reasonable to wait to stage, which basically means wait to do thoracic radiographs until the murmurs are grade three out of six or louder. There is always the potential that we could possibly miss a dog that might have heart enlargement that has a softer murmur. But if you look at this data from a study that's fairly recent, and there are a couple older studies that show similar results in the stage B1 dogs. So these are dogs without any heart enlargement. There's a range of murmur intensities across the entire spectrum. So even grade five and grade six murmurs could be present in dogs that had a normal heart size and would not actually even qualify for starting on pimobendin. Whereas the stage B2 dogs, none of them actually had murmurs that were softer than in grade three. So, you know, these numbers aren't huge. We're talking about a, a little bit more than 200 dogs total. But I think especially if finances are a concern, it's reasonable to wait to stage until the murmurs at least a grade three. And of course, there will always be people that are motivated to start a little bit earlier just because they've had a history with valve disease or they, they have personal family history, et cetera. So I think what's important is client education about how slowly the disease can progress. When we start considering staging with thoracic radiographs and basically giving the owner information on what to expect. So there is always the possibility that this disease can progress faster than expected. But that is even true in dogs that don't even have a murmur. So I will sometimes have owners say, you know, my, my dog was just, they just noted a grade five murmur last month. Like how could it have been missed till last month? And that actually isn't that uncommon. Dogs can suddenly rupture a cord. They can suddenly go into heart failure without any history of a murmur prior to that event. So I think it's important for owners to understand that once the dog has a murmur, it can be slowly progressive, but in a small subset of dogs, it can be rapidly progressive. And therefore it's important that they monitor for clinical signs such as changes in breathing patterns. So, and I guess since the question is primarily, should I start pimobendin? Um, we would, assuming this dog has a grade three murmur, I would recommend chest x-rays. If there's heart enlargement, that is either very severe or if it's borderline, I would consider an echocardiogram to see if the dog meets criteria to start vetmedin. But I don't just start vetmedin without further diagnostics.